Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is how the eyes see color. And we want to know what are the mechanisms that allow the human eye to see color. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the electromagnetic and visible light spectrum. The concepts of that video will be important to understanding this topic. If you need to review the video, I've left a link to it in the description section of this one. Electromagnetic waves exist with a vast range of wavelengths, which we refer to as the electromagnetic spectrum. Amidst this vast range, there's a very narrow portion of it that the human eye is sensitive to. In we refer to that region of wavelengths and frequencies as the visible light spectrum. The visible light spectrum consists of waves with wavelengths ranging from 420 nanometers on the low end on up to approximately 720 nanometers on the high end. Each wavelength is associated with a color. We can remember the colors of the visible light spectrum and their ordering by the familiar name Roy G. Bibb, where each letter of Roy name represents a color red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Vision is made possible because light enters the lens of the eye and lands on the back of the eye known as the retina. The retina is lined with millions of photoreceptive cells which sense the light that lands upon it, gathers the information, and sends it to the brain for processing. There are three types of color sensing cells which we refer to as cones. Each cone has a unique band of wavelengths that it is sensitive to. When light within that particular band of wavelengths strikes the eye, that particular cone will send signals to the brain. Now there is one cone known as the so-called blue cone that senses a range of wavelengths as shown here, with the peak of its sensitivity being around 470 nanometers. The so-called green cone has a range of wavelengths that it is sensitive to, with the peak of its sensitivity being around 530 nanometers. Finally, there is the red cone that has a range of wavelengths that it is sensitive to, with the peak of its sensitivity being around 640 nanometers. The blue, green, and red cones can sense more than just blue, green, and red wavelengths of light, but we refer to them as the blue, green, and red cones because the peak of their sensitivity is associated with those particular colors of light. Collectively, these three cones can sense all of the wavelengths within the visible light spectrum, and together they make it possible for humans to see color. Color is a physiological and psychological response to the wavelengths of light that strike the retina of the eye. When light of a wavelength within a cone's sensitivity range strikes the retina, that cone responds physiologically to the wavelength and sends a signal to the brain. When the brain receives the signal, it responds psychologically to the signal and interprets the signal in order to determine the color of the object being viewed. As an example, consider blue light with a wavelength of 470 nanometers striking the retina. All three cones would respond physiologically to that wavelength, but the blue cone is most sensitive to that wavelength and will send the strongest signal to the brain. In contrast, consider red light with a wavelength of 650 nanometers striking the retina. Only the red cone is sensitive to that wavelength and would send the strong signal to the brain. When green light with a wavelength of 520 nanometers strikes the retina, the green cone is most sensitive to that wavelength and sends, a, sends the strongest signal to the brain. A weaker signal would be sent by the blue cone. When yellow light with a wavelength of 575 nanometers strikes the retina, both the red and the green cone respond physiologically to it and send an equal strength signal to the brain, which the brain interprets to mean that's yellow light I'm looking at. Finally, when white light, with all the wavelengths of the visible light spectrum, strike the retina, all the cones respond physiologically and send signals to the brain, which the brain can interpret to mean I'm looking at a white object. The color yellow can be quite interesting. Let's assume for a moment that red and green light are shining up on the retina of the eye. The red cone and the green cone would be sensitive to those wavelengths of light and would send signals to the brain and the brain would interpret to mean 
I'm actually looking at something that's yellow. Now let's suppose that yellow wavelengths of light are shining up on the retina. The red in the green cone would respond physiologically to that yellow wavelength of light and would send signals to the brain which are interpreted to mean, hey, I'm looking at something yellow. So as far as the eye-brain system is concerned, there's absolutely no difference between yellow wavelengths of light striking the retina and a combination of equal intensity red and green light striking the retina. To demonstrate the relationship between red and green light and the color yellow, let's consider this light box simulation with three colored lights, red, green, and blue. We'll turn the blue off for now because it's not important. Then we'll take the green light and overlap it with the red light. Where they overlap, you observe yellow. While there's two physiological responses, red and green, there's only one psychological response, and that is the color yellow. In order to predict the color appearance of an object, you need to be able to employ the incident absorbed reflected model of light. To demonstrate, let's consider white light shining up on a red apple. Since white light is considered Roy G. Biv colors of light, I can say that Roy G. Biv is shining up on the apple. Apples are known to absorb OIG-BIV wavelengths of light, so the only color left that could reflect to the eye is the red wavelength of light. Once red wavelengths strike the retina of the eye, the red cone response sends signals to the brain, and the brain responds psychologically to say, hey, I'm looking at a red apple. I just used the incident absorbed reflected model of light to explain why a red apple looks red. There's always three questions you must ask. First, what colors of light are shining or, or incident upon the object? Second, what colors of light are absorbed by the object? If you can answer these first two questions, you can answer the third question, which is, what colors of light are reflected to the eye? As a second demonstration of the use of the incident absorbed reflected model, let's consider white light shining up on a yellow banana. When I ask what colors of light are incident on the object, I know it's white light, so it's Roy G. Biv wavelengths of light. Let's suppose that you're told that a yellow banana absorbs Rho G. Biv wavelengths of light. If that's the case, then the only color that didn't get absorbed from the colors that are incident upon the object were the yellow wavelengths of light. So yellow light is reflected to the eye, and that causes the red in the green cones of the retina to undergo a physiological response. The brain interprets the information to say, hey, I'm looking at a yellow object. Observe how I answered the three questions in order to determine the color appearance of the object. First, what colors of light are incident upon the object? Second, what colors of light are absorbed by the object? And from the answers to those first two questions, I can answer what colors of light are reflected to the eye. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. The RGB Color Edition Interactive would be a perfect way to explore how mixing colors of light determines determines how your eye responds. And we have two tutorial pages that would be perfect if you're having difficulty with the concept and you need to review. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H and I thank you for watching.